Well, hello everyone and welcome to Facebook Friday. Woohoo, it's Friday, I can't believe it. My week has flown by. I don't know about yours, but I've had a very, um, very interesting, interesting week. Hi Karen, how are you? Happy Friday. So I know everybody, it, it always takes a few minutes for everyone to get going and, and uh, join in. So as people are joining in, I'm gonna tell you a little story um, and tell you what's gone on. That's been really big in my life for the past week. So I have a new puppy. And if I look tired, I am tired. <laughs> Hello, Karen, hi, happy Friday. Yes, you're probably wondering why did I get this new puppy or I've been wondering about it. So um, really quick, I'll give you the quick story. Uh, I had to put down one of my golden retrievers last December and I still have another golden retriever at home. She's 13 years old. And I've been wavering about getting another dog, particularly should I get a puppy or not. And for the last few months, I've been telling myself from a logical perspective, no, I should not get a puppy because I'm at work a lot or I travel a lot. And how could I possibly do that? It's just not practical. Hello, Paula. So I'm just telling a little story right now and then we'll get into the calendaring tips. Anyway, um, my thought was that I maybe needed to get a one to two year old golden retriever, but I wasn't real excited about that. I really wanted a puppy. So over 4th of July holiday, I had my two grandchildren, Ian, who's 14, and Kaylee, who's, I think she's 11. And they stayed with me and I had this brilliant idea of let's go to the pet store and let's check out some pets. And also, it's really fun to play with the puppies. So let's go play with the puppies. Well, one hour later, I walked out of there with a Bernese Mountain Dog, <laughs> a 10 week old, 20 pound puppy. Happy Friday, Amy. And so my week has been a, an absolute whirlwind. I named him Aldo. And there's a whole story behind the name, but I'm not going to share that with you right now. So anyways, yes, I am the proud mother of this uh, dog who is going to get huge. And yes, I know he's going to get really big because my neighbors used to have one. Um, hi, Marie. Hello, hello, hello. All right. So what I'd like to talk about today for just a little bit is calendaring. And I know this is something that all assistants can relate to. Yesterday, I held a one hour session. It was a live e-course on mastering your executive's calendar. And thank you for the thumbs up. So I love thumbs up and I love the, the hearts too. So let me know, okay, how I'm doing. Anyways, it was really interesting. We had 35 assistants sign up for that course. Many of them just signed up within the last few days. And it made me realize or really emphasize for me how important calendaring is for assistance. It's so much a part of your life, isn't it? You spend probably most of your days setting appointments and arranging meetings only to change them several times, correct? And I remember as an, an executive assistant and when I worked as an assistant for 20 years, oh my gosh, the calendar consumes so much of our time or my time. And if you think about it, in those days, we didn't even have all the technology that you have available to you today, which makes it a lot easier, believe it or not. So um, what I wanna focus on today, I'm not, what I'm not gonna focus on are the apps or the tools or um, how to use Outlook. That's not what this is about today. I'm gonna focus really on the more important skills because the technology is just, it's the tool. But if you've gotta get your head in the right place with calendaring. So I wanna share with you two of my favorite pieces of advice when it comes to calendaring calendaring and then just one extra tip okay 
So the first one is working with your calendars and setting appointments and calls is a, um, those are cognitive tasks. In other words, those take brains, right? It really is not about the tool, scheduling and planning and looking at that calendar and looking weeks out and where to fit everything. It's like a big puzzle, right? That's cognitive. It takes brains to effectively uh, manage your executive's calendar. It involves strategy. You should be strategic when you are putting the calendar together. It takes empathy, right? Having empathy for your executive who has maybe just traveled overseas for a whole week and now is coming back and is being bombarded with requests for meetings. So think about what other cognitive skills are involved when you are managing the calendar. What else? I mentioned empathy. I mentioned, you know, you've got to really think. It involves what else? Logic, right? You also have to look at things from a logical perspective. You can't just also be emotional about the calendar or because people come up to you or call you and say, oh, I need an immediate meeting. I've got to see your executive today means that you give in to that. You also have to be a gate a good gatekeeper. Maybe logically it doesn't work out when you've looked at that. So does that make sense? Can you think about what other cognitive skills you need? And I'm going to look at my notes, what else I had under there. Um, so when you look at it from a cognitive perspective and you're looking at having to drop in new meetings or add meetings or move meetings around, you want to think about your executive's workload. You want to think about what other commitments they have. Thinking about the travel, and not just the travel of this week, let's say, but what did they do last week? What did they do? What are they doing next week? What kind of travel is involved? Are they doing any traveling? If they are traveling, are they traveling overseas? Thinking about jet lag. You know, you're looking at all these different pieces, and that's where you've got to use your brain. I remember several years ago, this gentleman had called me and wanted to talk to me about this technology. He had an idea for some type of technology that he wanted to design that would do basically calendaring instead of an assistant having to do it. And I was trying to explain to him that no technology will ever be able to do the job of a lot, you know, a person, a human being. Because calendaring isn't about just dropping dates in wherever there's a gap. You have to think about it. And I find it interesting today because what I'm noticing, I don't know if you're seeing this a lot, where again, everybody wants to use all these different uh, technical tools where it's the technology looking for the open times or dates and dropping in the appointments. Again, this is not uh, a robotic job. You are necessary to the process of effective calendar management. So, um, what else is under the cognitive? Uh, let me see. You want to think about how the um, meetings are in relation to each other. So for example, if let's say today I have a full schedule and I have various meetings today, am I going into a very intense meeting and then after that am I gonna have another intense meeting and then another intense meeting? So you know, it's even looking at that. So what I'd like you to think about or that what will really help you, hi Kelly, is don't just look at again oh there's i'm booking this meeting and the next meeting and the next meeting you've got to think about what else is involved in or with that meeting what is the level of uh, preparation that your executive is going to need to have for that meeting what is again the level of intensity maybe it's it's a very easy no-brainer meeting 
there are other meetings that are more intense, more robust. And I'll never forget this one senior VP, um, what they had said, this executive had said while I was coaching her and her assistant, is that my assistant has to understand that when I am getting ready to go into a meeting with my senior executive, that puts a lot more stress on me than when I'm having a meeting with one of my direct reports. So does that, I hope that makes sense to you. What I'm trying to say is you've got to look beyond just dropping dates in. Hello, Emily. So if you're just joining me right now, what I'm doing today is I'm just sharing two of my very favorite pieces of advice about calendaring that'll really make you stand out and um, reduce your executive stress. And then I have one little extra tip, okay? So Karen, my director needs time to recharge right between meetings, you know, to leave at least 15 minutes, if not 30. It's true, you know, when I was an assistant all those years, I thought I knew how cr uh, crazy it was for my executive to go from meeting to meeting to meeting or meeting to phone call and so forth. But I never ever really got it till I became a business owner. And my schedule is not nearly as bad of some of the executives that you support. You know, I don't have the, the, the breadth of staff that maybe some of your executives support. I don't travel overseas like probably some of your executives do. And I have a reason for that because the jet lag and that's really stressful. Yes, please allow bio breaks. I mean, there are days where I don't even have time to go run to the restroom, let alone eat. And that's just not good, it's not healthy. All right, the second, so my first tip for those of you who have just joined is number one, realize that calendaring is a cognitive task. It takes brains. You've got to use them, you've got to be engaged. And part of that um, piece of the brain is the strategic part. You also have the empathy part. You also have to have the logical part of it, right? All right, the second tip, this is super, super important, super, super, is to use a holistic approach. And maybe some of you do this and you don't even realize this is what you're doing. But holistic means you're looking at the entire big picture. So again, what did your executive do last week? What's going on this week? And what's going on the next two weeks? Again, you're almost looking at a whole month. And you're gonna think about, again, where was my executive? What was my executive doing? How many meetings was he or she in? Did they travel? If they were traveling, did they travel overseas? Didn't they travel overseas? What time did they get in? Hi, Nancy Fraze, one of my best friends. Hi, happy Friday. And then you've got to look at the upcoming schedules. My favorite phrase is just because a date is available, or sorry, just because a date is open, it does not mean I'm available. All right, let me say that again without messing it up. Just because a date is open, it does not mean I'm available, right? Because again, I need time to do things or to recoup from a trip. For example, in May, um, I was gone, I had three trips and some of them were big trips where I was gone for several days and then there were other times I was out of the office. I only had four days in the office in May. That was a pretty, pretty crazy schedule for me and it did involve jet lag, okay? So again, if my assistant is smart and she is, she knew that once May was over, June needed to settle down. I couldn't be overloaded, especially that first week in June. Hi, Peggy, happy Friday, right? So take, again, a holistic look at that executive's calendar. And with that, I would also say that, remember, every meeting is not urgent. How many times do you have people come to you and they say, oh, I've got to have this meeting right away. 
with your executive. Mm, you've got to do a little digging. So I'd like to hear from you, those of you who are on right now live with me, 41 of you. Um, what are some of the strategies and tips that you use when you're calendaring and when you're thinking about that calendar? How do you play gatekeeper? Because again, every meeting is not urgent. We could have meetings that are important, but they're not all urgent, believe me. And this is where I feel your power really comes into play. This is where you can really shine. This is where you have an opportunity to reduce your executive stress and the pressure. I mean, your executives' lives are just incredibly, uh, oh, I don't even want to use the word busy. They, they just basically never stop, right? Oh, let's see, my biggest struggle, let's see if I can get back to that. Oh, they're coming in too fast. My biggest struggle was figuring out my boss's nursing pumping schedule. Okay, so then maybe you have some personal things that you have to help your executive with. Uh, thinking back to, to some of the things I used to like to do for one of my executives, I used to schedule, his name was Chip, Chip Dudley. He was the um, CEO of a big bank in Memphis. And I used to schedule what I called Chip time. So Chip was meeting with Chip. And that was a couple days a week that we would block off the four to five o'clock frame time. And that was so Chip could really just review his day. He could go through emails. He could get ready for his next day. Miranda, thank you, include commute blocks to allow for stress-free travel. Yes, right? Thinking about the time that they have to commute, get from meeting to meeting. I know many of you um, work on these huge campuses. So I think about the logistics of your managers and executives having to maneuver and get around. Nancy also setting Outlook. Oh, these are good. They're just going too fast. So sorry if I can't keep up with all of you, but hopefully you're looking at each other's responses. These are a lot of good ideas. Um, so let's see, what else do I have for you? Again, those of you who are just joining me, yesterday I did a live one hour class on calendaring. So right now, this moment, I just wanted to share a few tips because our Facebook Fridays are supposedly shorter <laughs> sessions, uh, holds on my boss's calendar. That's a great idea. Time to breathe, really, really important. And also, I'd like to encourage you to hold your executives to their quiet time. I always say that executives, we are our own worst enemy. So we'll tell you, we need time to think and we need time to breathe and then we'll fill our own schedules or we'll, we'll just give our time away. And this is another area where I feel you should be a little more assertive. You should hold your executive's feet to the ground, remind her or him that they needed free time, they wanted some free time or just their time. Like I call it my project time. And that's just my time, whatever I want to do. And um, that might be something else. Have your executives work with you and blocking out what, again, I call project time. And that means it's just my time. I don't want any meetings. I don't want any phone calls. That's for me to be able to do what I need to do. Uh, let's see, Chris he is asking for desk time and we are meeting heavy. Wow, I'm learning how to protect his calendar. That's really, really good. Uh, while you're coming up with your ideas, the other little tip I wanted to talk about today is, of course, knowing your leader's preferences, right? Like, I do not like meetings or phone calls, especially heavy-duty um, things on Monday mornings. I have to get back into my work mode as well, and many of you probably feel the same way. Now imagine you've had this weekend where you're finally relaxed by Sunday night, and now let's say Monday morning, you've gotta come in early and go into this robust, intense meeting. You wouldn't be very happy about it, would you? You, wouldn't, you don't feel your sharpest. 
And so for me, I'm just talking about my preferences. I don't want any heavy duty meetings or phone calls on Mondays. Um, I'll take very lighthearted. I don't want anything on Friday afternoons. Okay, and most of Friday actually is my time to focus on the operational side of the business, catch up with my team, look at the financials, those types of things. Maybe some of your executives don't want to have any meetings or start their day till after 8.30. I knew of a high level executive who had an hour commute to get into the office. So she didn't want anything scheduled actually until after 10 o'clock in her day. So uh, what are some of your executives' preferences? Do any of you have, I'm sure your executives have some preferences as to when they don't want to have meetings. Um, different industries demand different level of assistance abilities. I work in finance and insurance. Okay, that's a very good point, Denise, thank you. So depending on your industry. Also, maybe we would look at seasonal. Maybe there are certain times of the year for you that your business is, you're much more, um, you're in high gear, right? And maybe there are a lot more meetings involved during that time of year. So preferences are really, really important. Well, what else do you want to talk about? I'm just going to take a, a couple more minutes. Any other ideas when it comes to meetings? Any other tips? Uh, some ideas that executives told me they want assistance to know is finding out more the purpose of the meeting. As an assistant, you should understand the context of a meeting, understand more the purpose before you book your executive into a meeting. I had one executive say, include the address and directions to a place, don't assume GPS is always working. So I thought that was a good point. Maybe something you don't think about. Um, another idea an executive said, if I have a meeting early the next morning, it would be great if my assistant would send me a text message the night before and just remind me. So that's another little hint, right? All right, well, I'm going to wrap this up. So let's see, keep, go ahead, keep contributing. You've got Thursday as project review, Friday as weekly review. Lizette, yes, ask meeting requesters for purpose and outcomes. So meetings are not going to go away. Your calendaring uh, tasks are critically important. So I just want to have you continue to get better and better. And I'm sorry if I'm tripping over my words today. As I said, it's been a long week. I haven't gotten much sleep because of my new puppy, <laughs> but I'll get better. By next Friday, I'll probably be a lot better because I'll have some rhythm. Okay, a couple announcements. A new, something new and exciting I want to share with you. We are going to be launching some ebooks. Yay, finally I'm getting around to writing some ebooks. And I don't mean, you know, the 200 page ebooks. These are going to be about 20 page ebooks, 20 to 25 pages. They're going to be very content rich. And the first one we're going to release is called Time Management for the Modern Assistant. We're going to launch it next Thursday, July 18th. I'm going to announce it at our webinar. Um, but if you want to check that out, we're going to do special pricing on our on that ebook because it is a new release. And speaking of July 18th, that's going to be a free webinar called, called Overworked and Underutilized. So there's still time you can sign up. And if you can't make the live event, you will get the replay. And what else? Uh, we opened our world-class assistant up to Dallas. So we added a new location because we've had a lot of demands for that course. So in September, we're going to be going to Dallas. Other than that, I hope you have a great rest of the day Friday. I hope you get some rest this weekend and just have a, a fantastic weekend and I'll see you next Friday. So thanks for joining. Bye.